Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Sharice Ruan, Marketing Specialist at Alertus Technologies. During this presentation, Ryan Oakley, National Sales Director and VP of Product, will provide insight on Alertus Fire Alarm Control Panel Solution and how you can unleash your fire alarm system's full emergency notification power. Feel free to submit your questions during the webinar at any time, and they will be addressed during the Q&A session at the end of this presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you after today's session. If you have any questions after this presentation, please email marketing at alertus.com. Now I'd like to turn it over to Ryan. Thank you very much, Reese. Uh, and uh, I have the pleasure of going over the fire panel integration and uh, the different kind of capabilities you can use, integrate using your existing asset, that fire panel, and then also pull some information out and create messaging uh, based upon that integration with the fire panel. And this, this one, I'm not going to go too technical, but I'm going to have a little bit in here for everybody. If your facilities are a fire marshal, if you're more IT related, if you're more emergency management, you know, I'm going to touch on a lot of the topics that end up coming up in conversations. And then uh, we'll, we'll kind of complete things with a, a Q&A to make sure that we uh, close the loop on any of those. And of course, if there's anything we don't answer uh, during this webinar, feel free to follow up with questions and we'll, we'll get you the correct resource. So again, thank you very much for joining. Today we'll do a little bit on Alertus Technologies, kind of uh, the intro type uh, stuff. Go through how do you send an alert, start to look at some of the challenges you're, you, you usually come across uh, that we see that other customers have. Then really kind of jump into the, the full Alertus system. If you're uh, new to Alertus, just a quick review there. And then also uh, go into the Alertus solution, codes and mandates, and then the fire alarm interface, which is really the, the innovative piece of uh, how we combine that with the entire mass notification system you have from Alertus. Uh, who are we? Uh, for, for more than a decade, it's actually more like 15 years now, uh, Alertus Technology has been committed to providing personalized, affordable mass notification solutions for our customers to quickly reach their entire facility with life-saving information in an emergency. Keys there, you know, cost-effective, we're, we're utilizing a lot of your existing assets, we're uh, connecting these things up so that you can uh, very uh, cost-effectively reach your your, uh, your population. And then it's facility-based. A lot of the devices, capabilities are, are in your facility today. We're just unifying those, delivering, making it very simple and easy for you to send that message. Uh, pioneers in audio-visual facility alerting, so there's that facility piece again. Global reach, over 2,000 customers. And uh, you know those customers encompass a lot of different industries. Whether you're here from uh, a corporate campus, higher education, healthcare, K to 12, I mean, we all have buildings. We all have people in these buildings. We all have uh, you know emergencies and things that just happen. Um, our, our solutions and what we've learned in the different industries applies across all industries. Just slightly different, you know, different challenges. But we'll get into some of those uh, as we as we go and dive into the solution a little bit more. So those that are newer to the Alertus solution and joining this kind of on a, on a first time or uh, you know just kind of reviewing what we what we can provide, you know we like to get into understanding how do you send an alert today because that's where we can really work with you on fine tuning and increasing and making that process better, simple, faster, so that instead of running around activating devices notifications, you can send one alert. And, and jump in and uh, and actually handle the, the challenge of that emergency. So a lot of the uh, challenges we come across, multiple buildings, locations, you know, you don't have a, an individual at each location trained to do all the appropriate things. So you can build these integrations ahead of time. So when you hit send, target that building, you don't have to have somebody on site. It could even be two in the morning. You know, multiple systems to activate. This is the one that, you know, most of our customers come to us and say, hey, I'm running around and, you know, there might be an active shooter. And the fire panels, you know, across the way from the uh, the entry or the screening point. Well, who's going to draw straws and run over to that closet, get in the closet, and make an announcement? This allows us to pretty much activate that fire panel, make that announcement for anywhere, even if that uh, threat is right there where your fire alarm panel control panel is. Uh, no way to notify at locations. Uh, you know, there, you're not alone if you've got a handful of locations where you know. Even if you had to, you couldn't send a message. We can very quickly uh, retrofit and provide options for sending message to those challenging locations. Uh, large number of employees, 
uh, employees moving between locations. So we've got outdoor solutions that if they're coming in from the parking lot, they'll, they, they can be alerted. Um, cell phones not allowed, even though uh, the smartphone's pretty ubiquitous, there's still a lot of areas that, that, that don't allow that, whether it's uh, for educational reasons, uh, you know, interruptions, might be that, um, you know, healthcare where there's still certain sensitive equipment and can't be related around, or even uh, military bases where there's uh, security concerns. Uh, we've even been to manufacturers where their manufacturing process is so pri proprietary that they don't allow cell phones within there. And then finally, minimal visual alerting. So you may have the ability to make a, a voice announcement, but how do you get you know text that can be read by somebody that's uh, that has different abilities? Uh, we can help with all of those situations. Uh, you know, the goal is to reach everyone everywhere with mass notifications. And you know, the idea is to add as many different capabilities or notification methods or layers so that you're guaranteed to reach somebody. You're covering all the white space. So in the diagram on the right, you see that each different uh, notification mode, whether it's overhead paging or address or the, the fire alarm speakers, outdoor sirens, maybe it's text, email, social media, they all serve a purpose and cover certain areas and, and make up for some of the shortcomings of each other. So if we use those all together, uh, we can cover the most amount of that white space possible and make sure that you know everyone's notified everywhere. Uh, we can do that where Alertis comes in is providing that single point of activation, make it simple so that you're activating all those systems. Uh, do a multimodal coverage, audiovisual, we'll talk a little bit about the codes uh, and why audiovisual is important. And then saves time, uh, sorry, saves, saving time saves lives. Uh, the average active shooter is about seven minutes well, if it takes you 10 minutes to get that message out, um, you know, it hasn't been as effective as possible with Alertus, literally within seconds that, that message is of hitting send, that message is going out. So the difference where we help our customers and kind of the sweet spot, single point of activation. And by that, we don't mean just a web browser. You can do it on a mobile app. You can do it while you're on the road. You can do it while you're in a meeting. You can go up to a Cisco or a phone and, and put in a pin code. And, and activate that. You could put uh, a quick activation buttons in your uh, operations, security operations center so that if you get that call or you see something on the camera, you can run over and hit lockdown campus or lockdown building and not even have to log into anything. Uh, obviously, that, that, that area has to be secure so nobody can get, just not everybody can get to that button. But we provide a quick, easy, single point to activate all those uh, notifications. Integration, that's how we accomplish uh, cost effectiveness and spreading that reach, whether it's uh, computer desktops, digital signage, fire panels, which we'll go into. And then finally, fill in the gaps. There's those challenging areas where you don't have a software endpoint. You don't maybe have a uh, PA or a fire alarm system. What, what, what do you do then? Uh, Alertus provides options like the alert beacon, uh, some of our, our LED marquees. You can add an individual text, self-amplified text-to-speech speaker indoor or outdoor to really fill in those gaps with uh, innovative alerting endpoints that are fully integrated and monitored with uh, the Alertus system. So, so you can kind of provide the full gamut of activation, integration to make the most of what you've got, and then finally, uh, those difficult spots, those white spaces, we can fill those in with uh, our hardware solutions. And I mentioned that uh, I was going to touch a little bit more on the codes. Uh, the codes you see below, NFPA, which is a lot of the fire alarming codes, uh, ADA accessibility, which kind of weaves its way through all these codes, requiring that you know that notification be not only audio but visual, support your entire population, and leave no one out. Um, that's key throughout um, the codes. UL, we'll talk a little bit about the certifications we have for the fire panel integration. And then uh, um, for the, the higher ed space, there's a Cleary Act. Uh, anybody that's uh, with higher ed, I'm, you're very familiar with that. And DOD has kind of a similar um, as NFPA, uh, that's uh, UFC, Unified Facilities Criteria. All of them kind of go at the same thing, is that you want to provide an audiovisual, so it's an ADA accessible, notification to everybody in your building. And how do we do that? We do that through different layers. And these layers on the right, you know, Alertus isn't, you know, coming up with this and, and setting a trend. These actually come from the NFPA handbook on suggestions on how best to design your emergency notification strategy 
so everybody is involved is notified. You've got the layer of indoor notifications, so that's your fire alarm integration. Uh, could be your public address integration. Uh, could be alert beacons, uh, the text to speech speakers, digital signage, all those kind of things in your building to notify people. Outdoor, you know, you've got people coming in from parking lots, going from building to building on campus. Uh, we worked with another uh, organization that had a big area where people would go out and uh, it's almost like a nature trail. Uh, we provide HPSA solutions, so providing that outdoor notification capability. Personal notification really takes on a lot of different things. Uh, we integrate with a lot of the uh, top service providers for text and email notifications. So if you've got one in place today, we integrate with that. Uh, but we also then extend to uh, mobile app options where you can do a data push uh, to your user's cell phones. And then finally, public alerting. If you so choose, you can connect up the system to, to automatically push either Twitter or Facebook. Um, some of our cable TV system integrations, if you've got a very large uh, system on campus, we actually use some of the emergency uh, broadcast system capabilities to give you the control of that right on your campus uh, with your uh, TV system. So there's a lot of different options, but a layered approach is really how you can make sure that everybody's notified and um, you're not missing a large portion of your population. This is a, a quick uh, graphic kind of to show some of those uh, items that you can put in play in your offices, uh, your locations, you know, between the alert beacon, the fire alarm control panel, which we'll go into more detail on, uh, using the VoIP phones potentially, LED marquees, and then even putting uh, either buttons for system-wide activation or buttons for individual address, uh, uh, duress, like your uh, your front office, uh, your entry point, that kind of thing. So, so really, there's a, a lot of options for in building, outdoors, and uh, you know overall public alerting uh, if you choose uh, to to distribute that message more broadly. But we'll get to the the heart of things, the uh, fire panel integration, and really jump into some of the details here. And and I'll I'll touch on some of the uh, the codes, mandates, certifications, how we do some of these things. Um, to give you an idea of how, how all this works. So first, you know, integration with the fire alarm, it's a uh, universal integration that either uses the, uh, the uh, contact closure, which is a dry contact, uses the serial port and the audio line in. These are all things that you can connect to without having to reprogram, uh, you know, change, recertify your fire panel, which is huge with integration. You know, it's very simple, straightforward. Next, monitoring. You know, we can monitor it, as I mentioned, from either just a simplified dry contact. So if it goes into alarm, we can send that out. That's kind of your most uh, simplified monitoring. The next step is we can actually read the events coming out of the panel. And, uh, you know, we can filter that through logic uh, that says certain events, you know, like supervisory, some other, other issues, panel-based uh, uh, notifications. Those aren't important enough, maybe. They're important to fire marshal, facility manager, but they're not as important enough to trigger a message. But then again, if there's a, uh, a sensor on that panel that senses gas, starts to ventilate a certain area, you may want to trigger a message that you want to vacate that area until the ventilation is complete. You may want to uh, you know, trigger more information related to a fire panel pull or you know, a, a uh, sprinkler head saying that a sprinkler head on, on the fifth floor has been activated. You know, and then all of a sudden you see a fire pull you know that those two correlated events, one, there's probably a fire because the uh, sprinkler fire went off, sprinkler went off, but we know that could be a false positive. But somebody also just pulled the fire alarm uh, panel uh, pull. So you can correlate those events and know that you've likely got a real situation on your hands. Next, audiovisual notification. We can uh, you know, use the strobes if they're labeled appropriately, either as alert or have no label if you, if you uh, desire. Or uh, we can supplement all the, uh, the alertus endpoints uh, to notify, you know, in, in addition to the, the fire uh, panel. The audio notification, we can leverage uh, your speakers, which are set up to cover the building. They're designed by the building engineer to be audible, intelligible. There's a lot of standards that go into that. We can leverage all of that design capability to inject an audio message into your, um, your speaker system so we can notify the entire building with an audio message there. 
broad application. You know, the interoperability is very broad and wide with the panels we can support. So, you know, depending on whether you have a Honeywell, Siemens, Tyco, EST, um, you know, any of the Honeywell different brands, you know, even if you have different brands within your network, we can use the same technology to unify, unify a lot of that messaging coming out of those panels uh, across your campus. And we're leveraging those existing systems that you've invested in. Uh, focusing a little bit more directly into the fire panel interface, you know, it integrates with most existing fire panels, distributed emergency alerts, connects to your entire mass notification system. So, you know, if there's an event on a panel that, that requires everybody in your entire organization to be uh, notified, that can occur. If you want to just notify certain groups, whether it's the people that are affected in the building, your operations center, some of your first responders, you can re we can include those in the group. It really gives you a, a comprehensive emergency notification coverage and allows you to really customize. If this event occurs, these people need to know about it. So I meant uh, key features, notification coverage. Fire alarm integration allows fire panel events to activate the alert system, which extends the alert beacons, text-to-speech, uh, spoken out, voice output. System can also tie into existing strobes and sounders. So we're, we're leveraging that asset to its fullest uh, based upon, uh, and um, we'll go through this uh, with each individual system based upon what the codes allow, and we'll work with you to ensure that you're, you're compliant uh, along the way. Broader application, the alert system can process many different types of fire panel codes to send a variety of emergency alerts. And finally, that integration is compatible with pretty much all fire panels out there. There's just a couple quick questions we generally ask you and and, and we move, move forward from there. And again, as I mentioned earlier, there isn't an alteration to the system. We're connecting into existing um, you know, uh, inputs, outputs from the panel uh, that doesn't require additional programming or recertification, so it's, it's very simplified uh, integration. Uh, the uh, fire alarm control interface uh, responds upon activation of the fire panel. It's instantaneous. Uh, the fire panel uh, interface takes event information from fire panel and applies smart logic. So what that means is we run it through our custom event triggers, our um, threat watcher, which is really a, a rules engine that says, okay, when these things occur, trigger these preset messages or use a, a portion of the message or information we're gleaning from that, that activation or that event in the actual message, uh, depending on how you've, how you've programmed and how you want to send that out. Uh, next, uh, translates com common fire panel abbreviations to intelligible spoken language. So for those of you that uh, have a lot of uh, experience with fire panels, fire panel programming, you know, it, there's a lot of differences between the fire panels, but there's a lot of similarities. We go through and help you to, um, you know, decode all those abbreviations. If it's FL is floor, you know, uh, um, you know, SLC or something that means something. We can we can make sure that the entire vocabulary matches so that we can take all those abbreviations that your initial programmer created and translate those to English and and, and ensure that happens every time. So we work with you to uh, do that. And finally, broadcast the message over multiple communication paths. You really have the flexibility to choose each and every communication path, combination of those groups uh, with the event that occurs. Our requirements, really straightforward. You know, audio input to the, the fire panel. Uh, that's if you want to use utilize the speakers, if there's speakers in addition to the horn strobe sounders with that panel. If you're interested in uh, creating alerts based upon fire panel output, uh, we use the, the RS-232 printer port. Uh, almost all of the panels ship with the printer port. We have run across a few that don't. Just check in, uh, make sure that that has that. And compatibility, as I mentioned, I, I mentioned a number of names like Simplex, uh, Tyco, Honeywell, Siemens. You know, some of these are the, uh, the brands like Honeywell Gamewell CI. Uh, are all brands that are underneath of that. Those we, we integrate universally with these these uh, systems. So this gives you gives you just a quick idea of flow. You know, a fire panel integration. You know that that would give us uh, a fire. It could come from a, a panic button, uh, a fire pole that gets translated through the the alert software and then uh, activates all of the different devices uh, and, and that you programmed in based upon the event occurring. So this comes together to really provide you a full 
notification capability for fire panel events. Uh, you know, those events could either be related to fire, but also could be related to, as I mentioned, ventilation issues, chemical issues. Um, some of our customers have uh, their duress buttons connected through the fire panel. And then also some uh, of our customers have monitoring that they, they want that if there's an emergency, that monitoring, that, that fire panel gets triggered with the, that emergency. And then the monitoring company then takes uh, takes that information and calls 911 or call, you know, looks to dispatch fire or something like that will, you know, with this integration allows you to kind of take advantage of what you've set up already and flows for that panel and, and, and uh, approaches and really broadens that for notification and uh, and, and uh, getting that message out and engaging the, the right responders. And so you can see all the different endpoints we can support here. So uh, this one's kind of been a, a more of a brief uh, overview. We generally do a demo, but unfortunately, uh, our building is doing maintenance in that room today, and uh, we weren't able to do that. We will follow up this with an email that includes a, uh, a demonstration, a, a quick video that will show how the system works, how it's activated, some of the, uh, the, the information outputs, that kind of thing. So, so look for that to uh, be in the uh, follow-up e email, uh, quick video. Uh, and we appreciate uh, you joining to, to learn a little bit more about the alert system integration with Fire Panel. At this point, I'll turn it over to Sharice. I know we've had some uh, good questions coming in. Uh, let's jump in from there. All right. Thank you. We are now beginning the Q&A session of our presentation. If you have a question, please submit them through the chat or question box. Please note if we do not get to your question during this session, a representative will reach out to answer your question directly. A recording of this webinar will also be shared with you after today's presentation. Now let's begin with our first question. How is the fire alarm output configured using only dry contact and not the RF-232 output? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's that's the more basic or simplified integration that I mentioned. Uh, you each of these panels are able to support contact closure or dry contact modules, and they're set up to either trigger when uh, you know the it goes into a uh, fire event. Um, you know that trigger is then sensed by the alert system either through a, a relay that we have or our alert beacons actually have interfaces on the back of them. Uh, that then translate that to a preset message. So you've built that says, hey, if this fire panel in building one goes into alarm, we want to go ahead and distribute a more broad message of that going into alarm. Uh, on the, the vice versa of that, you could also uh, program a second module so that when that, that message is, uh, is over or the panel is cleared, it tricks an up, trips another contact closure, which then sends the all clear automatically. So it's really kind of a very basic, simplified way of doing that, but uh, it's very effective if you're you're looking for a specific activation out of that. Uh, other customers have uh, wired a contact closure relay that translates multiple contact closures. So if your panel supports four or five or six presets, we can match your preset in the alertus system. So if your activation mode is to go up and push, you know, tornado button for your fire panel we can have that automatically trigger the tornado uh, preset, which takes it broad, more broadly to your digital signage, Cisco or Avaya phones, your desktops, uh, your alert beacons, that kind of thing. So, so that went a little bit further than just the contact closure, but we, it's pretty versatile in how we use that to integrate with the fire panel, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Uh, how many preset alerts can be programmed into a fire panel? Um, Really, the, the presets into the fire panel, um, those buttons are dependent on whatever the fire panel is set up as. Uh, we can really take in as many presets as, or uh, events as you, as you want. Um, one limitation would be how many contact closures if you choose that integration. But if you actually use the RS-232 and we monitor all the events, it's really, it really the, the sky's the limit. You can do as many of those as you, as you want that are pertinent to your, your business, the safety of your people, those kind of things. So it, it really, there's really isn't a limitation, but it's, uh, you know, it depends on which, which integration you deploy and how, um, how fancy or how, uh, how um, you know, detailed you want to be. Could this integration be used in place of an external monitoring service? Uh, I wouldn't say that it, the external monitoring service is one of those things that's required generally for buildings, that kind of thing. What this does is 
you know, it provides the power and a lot, ability to for you as um, the building occupant, the fire marshal, the uh, emergency responders, the security folks to have insight into what is the information going to that that mo that panel monitoring uh, that 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 service that's there, so that you know you're getting the same information and you can pick out which ones are pertinent to you and are important uh, for you know your your response. So you're not waiting for that panel to get read, that service to look at that, and then the service to call you. You're getting that feed just the same time they are, so that you can take uh, appropriate action and notify the right people, even you know potentially automatically if there's certain events that you pre-plan and program. So, Besides a full reset or logging into the software to cancel the alert, is there a way to silence the alert similar to the alarm silence on a fire panel? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, the uh, if, if you build it out, and this is how we usually best practices, the, the two minimum integrations is one, when the fire panel goes into alarm, and then two, when you go over and, and uh, you know reset that that say reset that system, and uh, and then once that reset occurs, it triggers a another output for an all clear. So really, uh, you know, you don't potentially have to even log in to do a notification that an event's occurred in the panel, and then trigger the all clear. Just the process at which you, as a fire marshal, maybe the fire department, building manager. Um, maybe if you're an emergency manager, if you get into the uh, into the fire panel and re reset that, that automatically triggers the all clear. You can go way beyond that and get fancier, but but those are kind of that's kind of a best practice so that you know not everybody has to be trained uh, to log in related to that event. Can you send live messages from the alerted system to the fire panel speakers? We can send uh, you know live or real time text. Based, which then gets converted into speech. So uh, there, there isn't a you know microphone on the alertist system that allows you to speak into that and, and, and deliver that message, but rather it, it takes the text of that message that you've either preset, pre-approved, or uh, created on the fly, or maybe even it came out of your uh, text or email application that you've got integrated. That text then gets delivered to the text-to-speech module and spoken clear. Uh, concise, intelligible uh, voice, um, very, very lifelike voice. But now it, it doesn't provide the ability to do a live voice announcement, um, you know, on the fly. It uses that, that innovative text to speech. And if you think about it, you know, uh, I've talked to a number of security folks that said, "Hey, my potentially my my night watchman that might be uh, the lowest paid, least trained. Although she, you know, everybody tries to focus as much on training." be the one jumping on that, that, that fire alarm system. And if you talk too quickly, you're, um, you know, rattled, you know, that can have an impact on intelligibility. So, so really we see as best, best practices delivering that with text to speech, because at that point you've got ultimate control of, over how, what's delivered, how it's said and the speed and intelligibility of that message. Does this offer the ability to test the alerts, for instance, to practice proper response to an alert with faculty and students? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you would uh, uh, best practices, obviously, if you send a message that included, say, making an announcement over the fire panel, you'd want to um, test and, and have that language vetted very well that somebody couldn't accidentally or misinterpret that as, as being a, uh, an, a, you know, a real event. Uh, you wouldn't want to get into what they had in Hawaii uh, earlier in the year, but uh, um, yeah, the, it could actually absolutely be part of the test, uh, and you would do a, a test preset or a test uh, language that you uh, set up that you would put in place, and uh, and then go from there. We also strongly recommend coordinating that with everybody so that even if you create create and select very uh, clear text to uh, to communicate or a message to communicate. Also want to do all the pre-planning to make sure that everybody's notified that the test will occur at that time, what to expect, all the all the elements of that as well. Thank you. Does the system include options for a wireless connection between the fire alarm panel and audio-visual endpoints? Uh, absolutely, and it, it depends on which, which integration and how you're doing it. If it's a uh, contact closure, we could sense that with an alert beacon, which could be on the Wi-Fi network. 
Uh, and then from there, once we once we get that that dry contact, uh, we use the the network communications with our software to really reach any of your devices. So any of the wireless devices would be uh, would be triggered as well as part of that message. So so you know the solution can be wired wireless. Uh, it really depends on what what wireless networking you have in place and what makes the most sense. Uh, and that that could be a combination of wired in one building, wireless in another. We have a lot of customers that have certain buildings where they only have a portion of the building uh, and or, um, you know, it's a historic type building that's protected and you, you really need to use more wireless uh, type solutions. So the flexibility exists for both. When interfacing to voice evac fire alarm systems, uh, not systems designed as MNS systems, what is your experience with replacing fire strobes with strobes that say alert per NFPA 72? Oh, great question. Yeah, definitely. So uh, the, the codes did realize originally when uh, NFPA 72 came out that they, they wanted an a amber strobe for an alert, clear strobe. Sometimes you'll see those in buildings that were built around that time. Well, they realized that, you know, that was adding a lot of additional expense. So they, they changed the code. I think it was in 2015 uh, release that, you know, the, the clear strobes could be used only if uh, the, the strobe is labeled alert or has no label. Uh, with that, though, you want to involve your, your HJ, your fire marshal. When you change those over, they're going to want to come, come in, recertify that. Um, and, and and that that change has occurred, that the pa the panels programmed appropriately, that all those devices work, that kind of thing. Uh, I have seen um, some uh, organizations be able to basically um, modify their existing strobes with either the ring or you know not really cross out, but appropriately block out the the lettering that's on there in a way that that can't be easily tam tampered or removed. But that's really been after a discussion with their AHJ and what they would approve. Some are willing to work with you. Some of them want you to go ahead and replace that whole strober device and retest everything. So, so we've, I, I've seen our customers have uh, mixed uh, mixed um, you know, experiences with that, and a lot of it has to do with who they're working with, their AHJ, and the the local fire marshal, uh, and what they're they're requiring. Is the Alertus fire panel interface UL listed? Uh, absolutely. We, a lot of customers have come to us and, and did when we first uh, came out with the, the integration, especially the, uh, the voice notification capability in that um, the, uh, you know, you're connecting the fire panel with a contact closure, dry contact, and also an audio input. There is a connection there, even though it's, not 100% required that, that that device be UL certified. We did go ahead and get UL certification for contact for the, that audio input, which would be UL 864. So that, that device is certified to connect, uh, and we, we can show, show that, that UL certification to your AHA or fire marshal uh, if they require that in the situation. Again, some of them say, oh, the audio, the dry contact, no, we're not worried about that. Some of them do uh, want to see that UL uh, to ensure that you know it's it's been tested, vetted, and um, their their jurisdiction is covered for any kind of integration like that. All right. Thank you very much. We have now concluded our Q and A session of our presentation. Again, if we did not get to your question, we will directly reach out to you with an answer. If you have any questions or need additional information, please feel free to email marketing at alertus.com, and we will be happy to assist. If you are looking for more information on Alertus and our solutions, visit our website, www.alertus.com. If you are interested in upcoming webinars, please visit alertus.com slash webinars to see the full schedule. Thank you for joining today's webinar, and we look forward to meeting you again soon.